Welcome to Pop Culture Retro, which was recently voted the 15th best podcast by the residents of the Golden Years Retirement Community in Boca Raton, Florida. Each show, we'll revisit some of your favorite pop culture memories with insider and outsider perspectives. Now, please help me welcome your hosts, Ike Eisenman and Jonathan Rosen. Hello, and welcome to another edition of Pop Culture Retro. I'm one of your hosts, Jonathan Rosen, along with Ike Eisenman. And today we are thrilled to welcome an Emmy winner, starred in some of the most memorable shows that movies that we that we grew up with, that we loved, and also the author of the memoir, Middle of the Rainbow, how a wife, mother, and two-time Emmy winner managed to find herself. Please help us welcome Bonnie Bartlett. Bonnie, thanks so much for joining us today. I'm happy to be here. Well, I just want to say before we start there, you and Ike worked together before. We did. We yes. did, yeah. I did uh, um, an episode of Little House um, called Centennial. And I, now you were on the show for quite some time, but I had the honor of of doing um, two episodes of the show over a couple of years, but but uh, one that we were in together. So yeah, we, right. we've got a direct connection. Same with uh, Same with Bill, by the way. Because oh, I was yeah. also I was also in the bastard. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that between... was over at Universal. Uh huh. Yeah. That was at Universal. The yep. Uh -huh. yep. I remember a lot, that. A lot of fun. A lot of fun. One of the Adams things. Yes, I know. <laughs> he's he's reprised that role of, uh, seems several he times. Yeah, he played all of the Adams. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sam Adams, you know, John Quincy. His well, also, with 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 Bill, I I'm also you know I'm a fellow Brooklyn boy, so that we had that in common. <laughs> so, I'm sorry, sir. I, I said with Bill, I'm a fellow Brooklyn boy. Oh, Brooklyn! You're from Brooklyn. Yes, I'm from Brooklyn. You can't tell from the accent, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're, we're really excited to you know to have you on the show and. You know, you, you both have had such incredible careers, which which we want to discuss. But to start with you, you, the two of you have been together for over seventy years. How did how did you meet? At Northwestern, I was eighteen, and uh, uh, we were cast. We were put in a, a group of people who were going to do a play. Mm -hmm. It was for a workshop, and it was called "Bury the Dead." And it was very serious, and uh, so we we were we both we all read all the people read for the different parts, and he heard. I should have him here for this. I'm sorry. Uh, he heard me, and hmm. um, reading, and he thought, "Oh, there's a terrific actress," and so he turned around, and. When I came down after the reading, he said, you want to go for coffee? I said, you're too short. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, oh, come on. What's the matter with you? He wasn't, he, he was very sure of himself. So that didn't throw him at all. <laughs> and what I really meant was that I was too tall for him, you know, because <laughs> we're about the same height. We were about the same height. <laughs> and uh, I was from a little town in Illinois where, you know, girls only went out with great big guys. If you were a big girl, you went out with big guys. Mm -hmm. A big girl didn't go out with a little guy. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, that was it. And from then on, we were tied at the hip. Wow. It just happened. Wow. It just happened. And and you you both written memoirs. I, I have yours right here. You um you know yours is Middle of the Rainbow, and both you know you and Bill you know he has his memoir as well. Both have very different tones in them. I mean both very incredibly different. fascinating. We're very yeah, different. Yours, very different. Yours is, is both incredibly fascinating in different ways. So you know well I'll hold yours up right here. So it's just um what what prompted you to write it. Well, I th you see, I had written a screenplay uh, when we first came out to California, which I didn't want to come out here. Mm -hmm. When we first came out here, I uh, 
met and became very friendly with a, a woman named Hesper Anderson, and she was a writer. And so she said, well, Monty, you know, because I was trying to find things to do. She said, why don't you write? So I wrote a screenplay about the loss of my baby and adoption there, thereafter. And so that was in the 70s. That had been right. written. So when it came time to write this book, and I did this book for two reasons. First of all, the Me Too stuff was coming out. Right. And I thought, oh, well, I should really write about that because I wanted people to know that you could survive that and you could, you know, abuse. You, you, you could be all right. Didn't have to destroy your life. It didn't have to ruin you. And uh, even though it does in ways, but you can overcome it. And so I and I wanted to press the therapy idea. You know, you have to talk about it. You have to have therapy. I've had a lot of therapy in my life to help me. So anyway, that was the motivation. And then, so I started writing uh, about the things that had happened and everything. Then I had a very good friend who is a very good writer that we had worked together in the, um, another friend who we worked together in the, uh, strike uh and at sag after the strike right. and uh That's when you were on the board oh yeah right yeah and bill was the president mm -hmm. of, of sag and so but anyway lauren uh lester is his name he's a wonderful writer and a wonderful actor he's in new york now acting he's got working on broadway or going to soon and uh he kept at me. He said, you know, this is okay, but I need to know more. I need to know how you felt. I need to know, you know, you've got to go deeper and deeper and deeper. And he kept, he said, write it all out. Just write and write and write. And so that's what I did. And I wrote all about my father and all about Moline, all mm -hmm. about, I just wrote and wrote and wrote and wrote and wrote. And then he'd say, that's a good story. Write that put that in. I said, what about this? That's a good. And then I just wrote it all out and wrote it and wrote it and rewrote it because mm -hmm. he would say, no, this doesn't sound, you know, and I wouldn't let him write, even though he's a good writer. I mm -hmm. just, I said, no, it's gotta be me. It's gotta be my voice. That's what I want to do. I want to talk to particularly other women, but men too. It's important for men to read this stuff because a lot oh, of them don't realize a lot of men don't realize how they have not abused but how they've the misogyny they just they they're nice guys Every, you know they're a lot of nice <laughs> they don't realize what they do so i thought writing it out then maybe they'll understand hmm. yeah, it, what you said well you just you mentioned a couple ago i was you know upsetting that you just read reading your memoir like just even the casual like jokes made by some guys that around your presence that you know that's that's what took me a lot that's what you know really struck me a lot just because that's what men do yeah, yeah they make jokes and they think it's funny but it's not it's mm -hmm. not funny to us as women that the james arness joke right yep that's you know, not the james arness thing i mean mm -hmm. he was a nice guy but why did he have to do that to right. get a laugh. He had to do that to amuse his buddies. You know, they think it's all funny and darling. And mm -hmm. it's not. It's not. It's not flirting. No, I agree. It's like very, it's it, it just like I said, upsetting to, to read some of the things here. But it was like very enlightening reading your memoir. That's mm -hmm. good. That's good. That's what I want. That's what I want. Mm -hmm. You know, that's all I want is is to if if I can make some people aware and help them to change a little bit of their behavior, mm -hmm. you know that's yeah. that's that's major. Well, to kind of to go ahead and jump into your career in the seventies, yeah. you were um, you were making Little House on the Prairie, um, and it's such an iconic show, which we all know. And of course, I've already mentioned that I did an episode with you. Um, 
how did you uh, how did you come to be involved in that? And can you tell us a little bit about Michael Landon and your experiences on the show? Yeah. Well, what happened is I did not want to come up to California because I didn't think uh, I wasn't working at the time in New York, but I I was taking care of my kids and I wanted them to go to school in New York City because I wanted them to be part of the world, not just a little town in Illinois, you know. And so, um, okay. So then when we got out here, much to my, I didn't, as I say, the marriage wasn't in good shape and, and I didn't want to come here anyway. And Bill very smartly just called his agent and said, hey, my, my wife's here now and she's a terrific actress and she's a um, uh, strong, strong actress. And he said, I think you should meet her. So I went over there I met all the guys and they said, who do you know? What if, Do you have any film? No, only television. I had done a soap opera for four mm -hmm. years. I had done a lot of Philco and those things that were going on live TV. And he's, I said, but no, no film. So they said, well, who do you know? And I said, the only director I know out here is Dan Petrie. And I said, he is a big fan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they said, okay, okay. And they, I was 42 or 40, 45, somewhere in there. I was in my early 40s. And I don't know, they just started sending me out. And I got everything that they sent me out. <laughs> Whether it was a, 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 a Gunsmoke, the Waltons, good parts, wonderful. I love playing Western, you know, ladies. And, um, uh, all kinds of different things. And then one day, Jimmy said, uh, listen, uh, I've got an appointment for you to go just to a look-see over to Michael Landon, who, Little House in the Prairie. And I said, swell. And I went over and I met Matt Michael. And he said, I got a job for you, starts next week. <laughs> he put me on, uh, Grace. She had she had just been written. He had just written her, mm -hmm. and uh, and he thought I was right. For it. it was a matter of luck, I guess, timing and luck. And he loved me, and all the time I worked, he just had such respect for me as an actress, and was so wanting to put me in wherever he could. And I. He photographed me so well. All of a sudden, I go, "Whoa, am I pretty? I'm so pretty." <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that, and I didn't. I, I had no awareness of that, of really that I photographed well and things like that. I didn't know that, and uh, so from then on, it just was several years on his show, mm -hmm. and then several years on, and he was wonderful all the way. I know he wasn't. He and Karen didn't get along. But that's what I read now. I that's that surprised me. Yeah, no, he and Karen, I didn't realize I knew that he was he that there were things about her he didn't like because he expressed mm -hmm. them to me, but I didn't know a lot of things until I read her book. Wow. And then I realized she said she had been an alcoholic. I had no awareness of that. She certainly hid it because wow. I was not aware of that at all. I was aware that she was a little bit standoffish sometimes. And I thought, well, maybe that's because Michael is nice to me and he's not nice to her. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, it was, a, for me, fabulous experience. He didn't pay well. He didn't pay well. But I didn't care. I was working. I didn't care. But, uh, but it was seen by so many people. That's yeah, so. yeah, yeah. All but my kids, my boys weren't <laughs> interested. They were, you know, what they were watching all the the British humor at that time. They, all those right. British shows that were funny. Right. That's what my kids, my boys liked. <laughs> <laughs> well, we we've had on, you know, Radimus Perrot, who who played your son on the show. Yeah, and, and yeah. He he was talking about at the time that he was a little upset because all of you had been written out at one point. Yes. What, what, what reason were you given? And, and did you feel that it was kind of pulling the rug out from under you a little bit? 
Yes, it was. Uh, fortunately, I was fine, but Victor got a chance to do uh, a, a, his own show, mm -hmm. a comedy. And he thought he was it was going to be a big success. So he quit. Oh. And so then they had already written seven scripts that I was in, and they had to just dump them oh. because he was gone. And so I said, okay. Uh, and I went on and did other things. And eventually got, we did St. Elsewhere, but a lot of other, I did a lot of movies of the week and a lot, I worked all the time, mm -hmm. but not on that. And uh, then Victor, that show, his show flopped. It was a big flop. So he went back and asked, this was a year later or so. He, and he said, he and Michael were good friends. He said, Mike, he wanted to go back on the show. So Michael put him back on the show. By that time, I was gone. I was doing oh. other things. Mm -hmm. I wasn't even available if they'd asked me. I, I wouldn't have been able to do it. Well, was, was Michael upset when Victor left the first time? Oh, I think so. Yeah. But, you know, he didn't want to hold him back. It sure. was a lead on a, you know, a sitcom. I'm sure he was upset. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it screwed the, I mean, the writers had to rewrite. Rewrite everything, sure. Yeah. Wow. Well, how was, uh, how was Victor to work with for you? Wonderful, fun. Fun, lots yeah, fun. I remember him being an incredibly lovely man. I was assume, yeah. just assuming that would be your answer, but we had to ask anyway. <laughs> yeah. No, he was terrific. Yeah, yeah, he was terrific. Funny, <laughs> funny. He, they teased me a lot about my ineptitude on film. Technically, you know, <laughs> I would pour, I would be so busy doing a scene, I would be pouring uh a jug or something, I would be pouring something and then they all stand out there looking at me and laughing. I said, what's, what's about? They said, you're pouring it into the sand. You're not pouring it into the bottle. You're pouring it into the sand. Because <laughs> I was very busy acting, you see. So I was not, I was not, I didn't pay enough attention to those little details. Mm. And the film's <laughs> very truthful. Well, well, we do want to discuss, you've just mentioned St. Elsewhere, uh, such a groundbreaking series, a brilliant cast. So how, how did you both come to be on that show, you and Bill? Bill was asked to be on it by Bruce Paltrow, who was the, the beginning. Producer. Bill had worked with Blythe. We knew Blythe. We knew Bruce a little bit, but we mostly we knew Blythe, Danner, his wife. Oh. Uh, you, you know, that was Bruce Paltrow was married to Blythe Danner, and then they are the parents of Gwyneth. Mm -hmm. So um, anyway, uh, they had searched and searched and searched. They read everybody in town, and because I I saw the scripts first. Because well, you saw it before, Bill. I saw it before, Bill, because wow. I was reading for the nurse, the head nurse. Wow, OK. You know, and then when I went in and read, they said, you know, it's nice reading, but we Bruce has already got somebody he wants. It's a, a friend and somebody he wants, and that was uh, Christina Pickles. So he okay. said the part is not available. So fine. And I went home, and then about oh god, a month or so later, Bruce called Bill and said, "Bill, I'm going to send you five scripts, and if you want to do this, you know we want you." So that was from, you know, other things he had done. So he, Bill never read after a while. He never read for anything. He was a terrible reader. And, and so Bill read the scripts and he said, hey, you know, uh, he, he, this is great writing for television. But he said, this part's not very big. And Bruce said, if you come and do it, we'll, they'll write for you. And they did. <laughs> and then about five scripts in. So Bill didn't want to do it at first. No, he didn't. No, he loved it. But he okay. just thought it's too small a part. Gotcha. Okay. And and I'll do it, but it's very and then Bruce but Bruce talked him into it. And because Bruce said, listen, they'll write for you. They will write for you. So uh they did. And right away. Right away. And uh and anyway, about five scripts in, 
the wife appeared. A <laughs> tiny part. She was just at a dinner with him. He was going to get the uh, uh, the Doctor of the Year award, and he always thought he was going to get it. You know, because he, was, he was the best. And so he never got it, but he <laughs> sure he thought he was going to get it. So anyway, he was bragging to people that he got his wife to stop smoking. And he was telling the neighbors, he was telling everybody that he managed to do this. So we're at the dinner table. He excuses himself to go to the bathroom. I pull out a cigarette. I pull out the thing. And I, Bill taught me how to do it very like a man would do it, you know, like a real <laughs> smoker. And, and now I didn't smoke. So he had to teach me. Bill yeah, so it's a it, that's something. a that's a tough skill. It really is because if it you is. don't know how to do it, you, you can, don't do it. Everyone who knows how to smoke will will, will um, know that you don't know you don't smoke. That's right. So you got to be right. very good at it. So interesting. Yeah. That's very interesting. So he spent a yeah. lot of time with me just <laughs> open the pack, how to do the thing, yeah, and then you know light it and so forth. And then wow. they, of course, because I didn't smoke pull away so you don't see the fact that I'm not doing it right. Because I never could learn to do that. Mm. You know, I never learned to take it in. Yeah. And so the camera got away from me just in time. Do you mm. know what I mean? But the, yeah. but we still got the joke. Right. We got the laughs about <laughs> about the cigarettes. <laughs> and so uh, anyway, but I didn't really want to do it. And it was this little part, but he said, no, 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 you got to do this because it's funny. So I said, okay. And so we did, we did that. Now the casting person who had called me, it's one of your questions about advice, you know, who gave you good, good advice, best advice you ever got. She was wonderful. And she, she, Eileen, she had cast me before and other things. And what I said, no, I'm not going to do this. And she said to me, come on, Bonnie, what are you doing? Are you so busy? Are you so busy that you can't do this? And I said, no. She says, well, just do it. And then Bill said, do it, because it's funny. So that's the best advice I ever got, because <laughs> it, led, it led to so much good stuff for me. Yeah. And, uh, so that's the well, answer to your question having had a chance to like see the scripts early on, did you immediately get a sense of how special this show was going to oh, be? Oh yeah. 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 I knew from the wow. start. Mm. I knew. I thought this is so special. Mm. The writing was so good. And it <laughs> was, and the, and the cast and, and uh, Bruce was such a good producer and he, he cast it with so many wonderful people and he recast parts that he didn't think worked well. He just went in and did it. And uh, from the first, I thought, I thought, oh my God, this is so wonderful. This is really good. I got it before Bill did. I think mm -hmm. oh, he knew, he knew it was good. <laughs> the writing was very special. Had so much humor. Yeah. You know, hey, Bill, M Mike, ask Bill to come in. Yeah. And he'll say hello to you and say a few things about staying elsewhere. <laughs> special uh, and i'll then i'll tell you the story about the emmys no i would like to hear that but i also want to know that the show was famously canceled after the yeah, first season after the first year right and, and brandon we, Carter we, went, we went to europe and when we were coming back and we called our son from new york coming back from europe because we had taken a little vacation because we'd made some money <laughs> and so we came back and uh, we said, Dad, I think that show you did has been picked up. Flying in. Flying in. Here he is. <laughs> Mr. Daniels. Uh -huh. Can you get in here? Hi. Hi. Here he is. Good talking to about meet you. Hello. Is that old man me? <laughs> yes, <that> old man. <laughs> We're talking about St. Elsewhere. Oh. And I just told them the story about the uh, the cigarette, you know? No. The, that, well, you know, when I 
smoked a cigarette and you said, yeah. oh, you got to take that. It's funny. Oh, yeah. yeah. I uh, tried to teach her how to handle a cigarette. She, <laughs> she didn't know how to do it at all. So we did a lot of nonsense packing the pack <laughs> out, getting a cigarette out and everything, doing everything but having her actually smoke a smoke. cigarette. Right, yeah. <laughs> But and it was, mm-hmm. but I'm t- I'm telling them now about the Emmys because they got the story a little wrong. So I'm going to well, tell you how how the Emmys happened. What? Please, please do. Yes. The first saying the first year of Saint Elsewhere. Um, uh, oh God, what, what's his name? Won the Emmy for Best Actor. Um, Billy, who was he? My favorite actor. Your favorite actor. The first year. Ed Flanders. Ed Flanders. Ed Flanders won. Right. So the second year, Mm -hmm. Bill was up and Eddie was up and Don Johnson was up, who has had a big show. Mm -hmm. So we come, he had gone to the Emmys once and didn't win it. So he didn't want to go again. And I said, yes, we got to go. We got to go. So I spent a lot of time you know, with the dress and the hair and the makeup and all this stuff. He got into the monkey suit, as he calls it. And, <laughs> and, and we get we get in the, the, the limo and just outside by the freeway, the limo breaks down. So it's not working, right? So. I get know, out. Yeah, he gets out of the car. And I walk home. Wow. <laughs> because I wanted to watch... Uh, uh, what's his McEnroe. name? McEnroe. McEnroe uh, play a match. Well, I, I don't blame you for that. <laughs> came back and yelled at me, what are you doing? So, yeah. So, so anyway, the guy uh, got another car or something. Anyway, we, we came back in the limo to pick him up. And I come yeah. in, it's all undressed, watching McEnroe and, and, and play tennis. And I said, Billy, you get back in that suit and you're gonna go to that thing. You're gonna, we're gonna go to that. I'm all dressed up, I've got makeup, I've spent money. He said, you know, you're gonna go. So that we're we're both gonna go. So he said, oh, all right. And he gets back into the suit. We get into the limo and we drive to the, wherever it is. We're all so late. We're very late. And so we get there. And we go down the aisle, you know, making everybody, disturbing everybody, going down the aisle. <laughs> and, and just as we get there, William Daniels. <laughs> and, oops, he gets up, he goes out, <laughs> disturbing everybody. He goes up on the stage and he makes a very funny speech about thanking me for him getting there to pick up his Emmy. <laughs> Right? <laughs> That's the way that story is. The second, the next year, he was nominated. I was nominated for Best Supporting Actress. That's the next year. So the next year, we get there, and it's all right. And we both win. That <laughs> was the third year, I think. And we both, that's the year that we both won Emmys. And we were both very happy. Amazing. Uh, it was just great. And then the following year, I won for Best Supporting Actress. He did not win. Uh, I won. And they said, uh, Mr. Bartlett, would you step aside, please, while we take? <laughs> well, <laughs> I thought that was the end of it. I mean, that was not good. <laughs> and they said, Mr. Bartlett. <laughs> Could you please step aside? He did not like that, not at all. But that's wow. the story of all of the Emmys. And it was wow. very exciting. And apparently, we're like one of the only couples that ever won the same show the same night. Same night. Wow. Unbelievable. So well, that's the story of the Emmys. Yes. Do your, do your life start changing when you both won Emmys? I mean, do you start getting like different like looked at differently in the industry, I guess, at different roles offered? No, 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 no. 
It doesn't mean a thing. Okay. Oh, <laughs> it's <just nice. laughs> it's that's a, that's the great myth, I suppose. Yeah. Well, to just quickly, we, we wanted to ask, you know, the the, the series finale of Saint Elsewhere. Were, were you aware of the ending before it aired? Before it aired, oh yeah, we were part of it. Mm -hmm. you know, the, the, I mean, you knew about this. It was in the the script, the, the snow globe ending. Oh yeah, yeah. Wow. Oh, we hated it. Uh, <laughs> I was wow. furious. I thought that's a terrible thing to do. But you know why Tom did that? Tom Fontana. He said he didn't want to ever have to return, and ten years later or five years later, do another. He didn't want to do that. He didn't want anything to do with hospitals after that. He had it. Oh, well, I, I, don't, uh, I don't know if Bill, if you were up to, we had we had a couple of questions regarding 1776, if you were up to it. I, you know, I don't know if you, you want to answer that, Bill, not for, we want to skip things. We, it's among our favorite musicals. Also, Nobody thought that uh, you could do a musical about the Declaration of Independence. Mm -hmm. Have it uh, be sure. interested, uh, uh, interesting uh, to a, pub a public. Uh, they, of course, were wrong. We went ahead and did it. And it ran for how long? Two years. Two years? More than two years, yeah. Yeah, two years yeah. and two months. You, you, you ran, you were with it two years and two months. Yeah. But it did mm -hmm. go on a little bit after you. Yes. Yeah. It, it it is on its on its face an odd concept because I I was you know quite young when I when I saw the movie and I thought I thought a musical about yeah the Declaration of Independence I don't know is this Schoolhouse Rock or something I don't you know but it was just such a lovely an amazing movie uh, for me to experience mm -hmm. but um we we read that originally you um you were not thrilled with the 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 script when you first saw it. What's that? The, the script. You saw an early script of it. Of what? Of 1776. Yes. Before, before um, the, the gentleman who came in and rewrote it. Peter yes. Stone. Peter. Peter Stone. Peter Stone. Oh, Peter right. Stone came in and rewrote it. Bill saw an early script right. with a friend. He was someplace at a, a reading or something of it. Uh -huh. And he heard the music. And he wasn't, he, he, none of, nobody was terribly interested. A lot of people turned it down. A lot of directors, including Jerry Robbins, turned mm. it down. Mm. And, uh, they finally, they got Peter Hunt, who was recommended by uh, uh, Jerry Robbins mm. to direct it. And that's, and then they, they called him in, and they had auditioned. They they were almost settled on somebody else. Mm. And the producer, the producer of the show, knew Bill as a little boy when he was on uh, the television show. The uh, what was that? Horner Harder. Horner Harder. Horner. And he knew him from there, and then he knew him. Oh, all along, you know, but he was like a fan. And that was the guy who called Bill in. And Bill blew the lyric. What what was the lyric that you blew? It was from what? Wait till you're 60. Oh, I was. Wait till you're 60. Oh, yeah. Uh, the song was Wait Till You're 65. Mm -hmm. And um, I got a few lines into it, and then I couldn't remember what else. They all laughed. Oh, no. So I said, I, I, I can't remember anything more. And they all laughed. And uh, that was that. Mm -hmm. He went home, and they asked him to do the show. To do the show. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I want to say. Dinner. We had dinner that night with somebody who thought he had the part. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's such a phenomenal fun. musical, it really is. I, it's one of my favorites. I know it's one of Ike's favorites. I, I do, before before anything, I do have to say that my kids love, know you just from Boy Meets World, and they're uh, huge, yeah. huge fans of that Mr. show. Kimmy. 
yes, they they love they love everything about that. They love you from Boy mm-hmm. Meets World. And uh, I just watched the the last scene again last night, and it still brings tears to my eyes. <laughs> the the last scene of the show. Yeah, mine too. He, yeah, he too. Bill, isn't that your favorite scene, really? What the last scene where you tell them all you love them? Oh yeah, yeah. They all left, and I was alone. Right. Classroom, up at the desk, and I and I said, "I love you all." Mm. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I just think it's a credit to your career that, you know, Ike and I know you from 1776, and they're like, you know, almost 30 years, 20, 30 years later, you know, my kids are fans of yours from a different, uh, you know, uh, show and a different uh, project. It is. It's amazing. Yeah. He's, he's gone through so many different generations. And yes. this has been, and he was originally a little boy on Broadway and right. life with his father. Yeah, and he was in the yeah. army. I, I think it's a huge testament to absolutely and credit. And like I said, we're we're a both long, fans. long, wonderful career. Yes, yes, mm. absolutely. So yeah, we had some other questions for you, Bonnie, as well for twins. If uh, we want to talk about twins for a second. Sure. Thank you, Bill. Thank okay. you. Okay. Thank you. Thank honey. you so much. Yes. yes. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> okay, you know, yeah. So, Talk yeah, we did want to talk about Twins, you know, directed by Ivan Reitman, starring Schwarzenegger and Danny DeVito. So I, I was reading that you had to be convinced to stay on? Oh, yes. Uh, that was a... I don't know why, but I, 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 uh, I read for the part. I didn't think I would get it because there were a lot of kind of uh, beautiful, older... Uh, movie stars, you know, had been movie stars that were up for it. And I didn't ever thought I'd get it, but I did. And then uh, I went to a reading and of course I knew Danny because everybody- You did know Danny beforehand. Oh yeah. And mm-hmm. and I mean, he, he if, if Danny, everybody knew Danny. I mean, he just was there and he was very special. And uh, then there was this guy in shorts with a lot of muscle. I didn't know who he was. But I soon found out. Anyway, I didn't <laughs> like the script very much. I didn't, you know. So I called my agent. And I said, get me out of it. I don't want to do it. And he said, Bonnie, you're crazy. I said, maybe I'm crazy, but I just, it's its not there. There's no part. There's no character. There's nobody there. I, I just don't want to do it. And uh, I had just come, come off St. Elsewhere, which was so wonderful. Right. And so... Uh, He said, okay. So then he called and he said, Arnold, uh, not Arnold, Ivan Reitman wants to talk to you. He's the director. And I said, okay. He said, he wants to have lunch with you, you know. So he took me over there and Ivan said to him, just leave, go go bye bye. And Ivan had lunch. I didn't, he didn't offer me anything. And he was eating his lunch and so forth. And he says, now tell me what's wrong with the script for you. And so I did. And I, I, in detail, from the very start, I showed him what I thought, and there's no other there, and she should have, you've got to know who she is. She has to have, we have to know who, you know, and there she should have something to say. And there, blah, 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 blah. And I went through the whole script. And he said, well, I can't make you do this movie. <laughs> but I'll tell you one thing. I'm going to use everything you just told me. I'm putting it all in. (laughs) Well, how can you do? You can't say no then. I mean, (laughs) you've you've rewritten, you know, the whole thing. And he was that way through the whole thing. Whatever I wanted, he brought in special makeup people because Arnold Schwarzenegger's guys had put aged makeup on me. It was terrible. It was just (laughs) terrible. And I said, this is, you know, I, I was just treated so well. Ivan was so smart. He uh, he just treated me so well. I was, I, so I contributed to the movie. I brought in the little teddy bear to <laughs> have in that last scene. It was my teddy bear that I borrowed from the girl down the street. Mm-hmm. 
and he used it and he photographed, he went right in and photographed it. I mean, it couldn't have been more of a collaboration. My little part, my little part. And it, it, it made the show because it, the movie, because it, it grounded the movie. It made it real. Mm -hmm. You know, if you make her a real person, then it, it made it real. Good for the movie. It was oh, good. it's fantastic. Well, I think it's such a funny movie. I, I still watch watch that. How was it working with uh, Schwarzenegger and DeVito? And, and also, we want to know what uh, Reitman was like as a director. Ivan, for me, was wonderful. Mm -hmm. I know, you know, for different people, you're different. But he was wonderful for me. He never told me how to do anything. We talked about things. And originally, he had wanted me to even play her as, as the young woman. And we spent a lot of time trying to do makeup and stuff like that. And it, finally, he came to me in the wagon the day they were going to film it. And he said, Bonnie, I can't do it. I really can't take a chance. I said, fine, you're right. You shouldn't. And I said, but get get a really classy girl. He says, I'm just going to use one of the extras. And I said, fine, but pick a classy girl. And and he did, and it worked beautifully. And it it was not a good. You can't use somebody my age to play eighteen. You know when, and you just can't do it. It's, it's well, maybe they can now. Now with the <laughs> <laughs> now now with all that stuff they could do. It now. How how yeah. is it working with Schwarzenegger and DeVito? I love Schwarzenegger. He's very smart. Not a good actor. Not an actor at all. <laughs> but but but. A really interesting guy. I think he's a terrific man. Yeah. And I think his, he's made a speech recently about what it's like to live under communism. And yes, it's a speech. It was a great, it's important for our country yep. you know, to hear sense. that. And uh, I'm very proud of him. I think he's terrific. Mm. I think he's terrific. And uh, he, he's not. He's not an actor, but as a human being, as a person, mm -hmm. fabulous. Uh, yeah. How, how did how did you 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 came on to the end of Boy Meets World as well? Yes. Yes. So how did that? They just, Michael uh, Jacobs did that. He wanted, I think, he wanted the audience to think that uh, Mr. Feeney wouldn't be alone, that Mr. Feeney <laughs> somebody. Do you know? And so he called me naturally because I'm the wife, the real wife and the stage wife and the everything. So yeah. Yeah, I just wanted to, I was curious with Bill, since you did Bill feel like sort of a sense of responsibility since he was surrounded by kid actors on that no, show? He, just no, he didn't. He didn't. He really he didn't uh he didn't try to tell them what to do. I said to him once, I said, why don't you help them? Why didn't you, you know, make some such? He said, "No, they're on a level with me. They are the same mm. level that I am. I am not the director. I am not there to tell them what to do. They're just my colleagues, my fellow actors, and uh, they learned from him just from his behavior. Mm. You know, his he's so responsible, totally responsible, and I think they all learned." A lot about that, you mm -hmm. know. About, that they they all thought he was British. Is that true? What? I read that they all thought he was British. Yes, they did. <laughs> they, did. <laughs> they did. Well, no, that's just really good to hear because I, you know, was a child actor, and and it, it was always incredibly important to me that I be that I be treated the same as the other actors by everyone, and that was almost almost always the case for me so his instincts were really right because that from that perspective that's what you want you know you want to be a we're we're in it to be a part of an adult world and not that we're you know trying to be adults but we want to be a part of this world and not you know singled out in any particular way and yeah i learned a lot from everyone i worked with in much the same fashion so that's that's lovely to hear yeah that's it's you know what you mentioned of that about instinct Bill always has, in terms of theater, in terms of acting, in terms of, he has fabulous instincts mm -hmm. always. And I think that's why he's 
done so many things so whatever he's doing yeah it's it's something about him mm -hmm. it's coming through yeah that is resonates with people sure. and you you remember it you know I, I did i did want to ask you about one other thing you you have in your memoir was that you studied acting with with lee strasberg but you had also been there with marilyn monroe during that time, you had a lot of interaction with her. Can you remember some of the, you know, tell I some of the experience? A lot. Yeah, she came to, to work with Lee and she was a very good student. She sat up in front and was very, paid a lot of attention, mm -hmm. you know, narrowed in, was, she was very quiet. She was not a talkative person and her voice was light, but she just was like a regular person. And, you know, she was, in, she was a little little too heavy and uh had you know could gain weight and she, so that and her hair she didn't bleach it so that it was kind of dark red curly mm -hmm. red hair she had her face was like uh uh been outside you know ruddy she had a ruddy complexion mm -hmm. so she created and invented no i'm not saying it was just her maybe somebody else was there too helping they created this character and she could turn that character on or off but it was uh it complicated her life it complicated her life wow. made it, uh, difficult difficult and see she had had no background she had no bringing up she had no parenting she had nothing she was on her own all the way. And uh, she she just couldn't make it as a human being. She just never got strong enough to make it, you know, without liquor and dope right. and sex and all of that. I mean, she just, she was a very nice person, basically a very nice, but not that special. What was special was the character that she created. Persona, right. You know, which was amazing. Wow, that's that's fascinating. And very comedic, very comedic. <laughs> well. She knew how to make fun of it all. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, maybe you can answer this question for both you and, and Bill, but looking back on, on your careers, which, which roles stand out? To you the most and does bill have a particular favorite you know i think the 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 character that intrigued him the most was actually john quincy adams mm -hmm. he did a whole series for um something i don't know anyway it was a whole series of john quincy adams right. and so he studied it and we looked at it and he said this guy was really great. Mm. This guy really, when he came back and was a senator, he was brilliant. And he he did writing some of the most important things that the country ever had with uh, negotiations with other countries, things mm. like that. He was a man of the world. Uh, John Adams, you know, was, uh, and brilliant. <laughs> And had a brilliant wife, but uh, they were that way. But this John Quincy was really a man of the world, and he had been over in Russia when he was a little boy. He he had a sense he had a sense of the world that was rare in those days, and he had a sense of he helped the um, the South, you know, for so long. There were. Uh, for four slaves, you got one vote. Right, right. Every four slaves, you got a vote. And he got rid of that in the, when he was in the Senate, so that they that that didn't they didn't count. They were on their own. They were you didn't get counted for your slaves. Mm -hmm. So he he hurt the South economically economically but mm -hmm. it did it did make the voting thing much more accurate much more accurate 
Because mm. if you're a slave owner, say you own 100 slaves, you get all those votes. Right. Mm. Uh, how about for yourself? Which role of yours stands out the most to you that you know you're that you think of yourself for? My roles? Yeah. Uh, well, I've played, and I'm, it's interesting now because I just did uh, Queen Margaret in Richard III for mm -hmm. a thing that's going to come out. Oh, man. I'll be curious to see how it worked. My son filmed it, and he said that it was good. I said, I don't know. We'll see. But anyway, yeah, I played Lady Macbeth two or three times, and I ne you never get it right. That's the wonderful thing about Shakespeare or about any great writing. You never get it right. You, sh you should do it over and over and over. Uh, 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 that's what the theater is about. Mm -hmm. or it used to be and you would you would play a part one year and then maybe you'd play that same part four years from now and you'd get better it's interesting it's sort of like yeah a musician who would play something in a pianist and then five years later maybe it'd be better you know the repetition of the same creativity the repetition of the same creativity mm -hmm. And it gets better. We don't get a chance to do that. Mm. Nope. But that's what. And uh, of course, Tennessee Williams, I did uh, in stock, Blanche. That's such a pleasure and such a great role. And I was very proud of my work. Yeah, I was very proud of my work. I'm yeah, you just mentioned that you have something else coming out soon. Is there something also that you're working on next? No, I, I think I may do the uh, audio of the book. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, we're talking about that. Uh, I guess I could do it. I guess so. Of course Take you can. Book. You know, it's not that long a book. It's not like Barbara Streisand. <clears throat> can you see her doing the audio? 950 <laughs> pages. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, Oh my God. It, it was it was really it, it was an unbelievable book to read and you know just I definitely like I'll hold it up one more time but you know again you know middle of middle of the rainbow that we're going to put a graphic on there as well yes. um, and I also you know everyone should go out and buy uh, Bill's memoir as well the uh, there yes. I go again how I there came I to be Mr. Again. Feeney John Adams Dr. Craig Kit and many others also very entertaining uh, memoir I, I read them both over the last month and really entertaining and very different yes very very different bonnie i want to thank you so much for joining us today it was such a treat to get to talk to you it's such a pleasure to hear your stories and, and please thank bill for us as well i will i will and again uh this has been pop culture retro i'm your one of your hosts jonathan rosen along with ike eisenman and again a very special thanks to bonnie bartlett and please subscribe Thank you for listening to Pop Culture Retro, where no one was hurt during the making of this podcast.